Chris here from Coulter's Good Earth Farm. Today we are going to be talking about pruning tools. It's February and this is normally the time we get started in the orchards doing a lot of our pruning. We're also going to have a pruning workshop here on the farm so I thought it would be instructive to do a short video talking about the different types of tools we use to prune. Uh, if you have a few trees in the backyard, if you have a small orchard, a large orchard, uh, you're probably going to need these tools. Even if you have just a few ornamental trees in your yard or a large garden, some of these tools are going to be useful for, for many different tasks. So these are things that you might want to have in your garden tool chest. As far as pruning tools, uh, the three main ones are a saw, a pair of loppers, and a pair of hand pruners. So we're going to go through these and talk about each one. When you're approaching a tree to prune it, you want to think, what are the biggest cuts I need to make first? And for those cuts, you're probably going to need a saw. So what is the difference between a pruning saw and just a regular hand saw? Well, the main difference is the size of the teeth. On a pruning saw, you see that the teeth are uh, more coarse, they're larger, and they do a better job cutting through that fresh green material that's sappy. If you use a regular hand saw that has finer teeth, it's made for a finer cut, and it's going to gum up really easily when you're using this to cut green wood. So this is probably not the best thing to use. If this is all you have, it will work but pruning saws will have uh, larger teeth and they're going to be specifically made for that. Now there's lots of different pruning saws out there. There are hand saws, there are folding saws, there are saws like this with a longer handle on them, uh, but any of those will work fine. It really depends on your circumstances. A basic folding saw like this is, is inexpensive. These can be had for less than $20 and this will meet most of your pruning needs in a small orchard or the backyard. This one here is just an 8 or 10 inch folding saw. Looks like it's a Corona. I've got uh, 7 ounces on there because this is actually the one I also take backpacking. So I wanted something lightweight. So you can cut some firewood with this. But it can also do your pruning tasks in the orchard. The nice thing about these little folding saws are you can put them in your pocket. And then you can pick up your loppers and put your pruners on your belt. And you're ready to go to the orchard. So it's convenient when you need to make a cut, you pull it out and you put it back in. Some of the larger saws with uh, handles, they're kind of bulky and large. A lot of them even have a holster or a way you can you know, protect the blade. Uh, so those are good as well. Actually, the one I use the most in the orchard is this long-handled Fano saw. I like this one because I can actually choke up and make smaller cuts with it. But it's got a little length here, so I can I can reach up there and get some taller cuts out of you know out of my arm's length. So this is the one I use the most frequently in the orchard, and this one I really like. I guess it's called a long handled saw. It's made by Fano. It is uh, probably Japanese steel blade, but the company is off the out of the West Coast, Washington State. I'm pretty sure. So I've had this one for many years, and this is the one I go to the most often. I do uh, I did put a little. Uh, uh, drilled a hole here and then put a little handle on that so I could actually hang it up. So that's the only thing I've done with this one that's different. But that's a good saw and I've used that one a lot. These will run probably more like $50, $60 for these versus $20 for those. You can get even longer uh, telescoping uh, saws as well. So you can have these that will really reach out there and um, different, this one's a Fiskars but you can have uh, different varieties. Most of these companies will make different types of saws. So that's one as well. The next tool that you're going to use quite frequently in the orchard are a pair of loppers. In fact, probably 80% of the time you're cutting, you're making cuts with these. These will be good for cuts up to about an inch and a half in diameter. And uh, then you can actually go down to the smaller cuts with these as well. So you can use them for a wide variety of cuts. So most of the time when you're pruning, you're going to be using a pair of loppers. I've used for years this pair of steel handle. They're quite long, so you can actually have a pretty good reach on those. A lot of good leverage, and they're strong. I'm starting to wear them out, but they've been pretty good. This is just a cheap pair of Fiskars, maybe $20 or $30, uh, so they've been pretty good. Uh, but I've come to use these more and more because these are a lot lighter. So these are Baco aluminum handle pruners. They're still really strong. They have really excellent cutting steel. They're easy to sharpen. These are going to be more expensive than these. These things will run probably more like $70 or $80, but they're high quality. Baco is a Swedish company, but I think these are made in France now. They make tools. Baco makes tools all across Europe. So 
These are um, a nice pair of whoppers and they're lightweight. You can prune with those all day long and you really don't get tired. And, and being the shorter size, I've, I've kind of prefer the shorter size because I can kind of maneuver around the tree a little bit better and they still have adequate reach. So if I need something uh, that's a little bit longer, I can grab a different pair or I can grab my saw or something. But your loppers are very useful. So get a good pair. I know that um, Felco makes loppers, uh, Fiskars makes lots of loppers, Corona makes loppers, so most companies make loppers. Uh, just get a pair that you like that, that work well for you and um, you know, buy quality if you can, they'll just last a lot longer. If you're just doing a few cuts around the, the backyard, then some of the cheaper pairs are just fine. You can pick up these uh, probably $20 or $30. Here's another pair of Fiskars that are newer. Just make sure they're tough, made out of steel, with a good blade you can sharpen and they'll probably do all you want to do. Next we have pruners. So we had saw, loppers, and these are actually, when we talk about pruners, these are what, we, what we're talking about. These are hand pruners and these are also from Felco. These are probably the, uh, the most popular and it's generally considered the best quality hand pruners you can get are uh, pruners from Felco. This is going to be your fine work, your smaller cuts. Uh, you can make a cut up to inch, maybe inch and a half with these, but that's sort of uh, pushing it. These are mostly for your fine work. They're also useful outside of the orchard when you're gardening. I carry these and use them for a lot of things. Sometimes you get large stem vegetables and weeds that you need to cut. Well, I've got these on my side, then I'll use these. So they're not just useful in the orchard, but a good pair of, of pruners is good no matter what kind of gardening you do. And Felcos are probably the best. Uh, ARS makes a good pruner. There's sort of a lot of knockoffs that look just like these. AM Leonard, which is a nursery company, makes a good version of this, about $35. These Felcos are more expensive, $50 or $60 for this model. This is the Felco number six. The most popular Felco, I think, is the number two model. It has a, bit, a little bit longer blade size and the handles are a little bit longer. This Felco number six is my preference. It's a little bit smaller and it has a little bit finer cutting blades there. So my hands aren't really that small, but for people that have small hands or have maybe a weak grip, uh, these are really good. I would, I would, I would let you consider these uh, instead of the number twos. So I, I prefer this model, but whichever one works good for you. So these are nice, uh, Swiss made of course, so they're going to last you a long time and uh, highly recommended. If you're going to get these, go ahead and get a sheath with them. This is not the sheath that actually came with these pruners. This, I think this was the original. Felco sheath. I didn't really like it. I didn't think it fit very well, so I used that for another tool, which I will talk about in a second. Uh, but I, I went ahead and got just a generic Corona sheath, and I've had this one for I think 20-25 years, and you can see uh, the difference here. What 20-25 what years do to a pair of pruners? Here's a new pair I bought last year as a backup of the same kind, number number six Felcos, and um, you see how they've they've worn pretty well, but they're not. Uh, worse for the wear here. So, anyway, hand pruners are your next tool that you use. The next tool I did want to mention, and it's not one of the main tools we use pruning, but the, you're going to see these quite often, and these are shears. Uh, these are not for heavy wood cutting. These are more for cut flowers, vegetables, herbs. In fact, that's what we use them for on the farm here. We do a lot of uh, cut flowers with them. Uh, we get stainless steel ones are my favorite because they're easy to sterilize. We'll use a bleach solution to sterilize those between our cuts sometimes. And um, the problem with bleach though, it does, it does cause a little bit of corrosion on the non-stainless steel parts. But this is a, this is a Corona, so these work, uh, these work well. And we'll use those for a lot of light cutting. If you do try to use those things for wood, I'm not sure you can see that one or not, but you can break the tip off of them. So I've done something that I shouldn't have with that one. So I snapped the tip off on that one. But if you use them with the way they're supposed to be used as uh, you know, just a light, light shearing work, uh, light herbs, then those work well for you as well. A couple more things I wanted to mention that it's useful to have in the orchard when you're pruning is a way to sharpen your blades. If you're doing a lot of cutting, then you're going to need some way to top off that blade through the day. And uh, just a little hand sharpener like that works well. So when your blade starts to get a little dull, uh, make sure you keep that sharp and that will uh, allow you to be, it's, it's easier to cut, it's going to be less work, more efficient, so make sure your blades are sharp when you are pruning. 
if you're just going to go out and prune one tree, you probably don't need to do that. Make sure your tool's sharp before you start. Talking about sharp tools, the other thing I would recommend are a good pair of gloves when you're pruning. These just protect your hands from spiny trees, maybe you're pruning rose bushes. You may need some heavier leather gloves for that, but I like these thin, uh, thin gloves that protect the hands. If you are doing a lot of cuts, it's easy to kind of nick your hand, nick your fingers a little bit. If you're, if you're dealing with sharp saw blades, sometimes you can grab something. And this just protects your hands from cuts and, and scrapes. So you can do a better job with gloves. You don't have to worry about you know, injuring yourself there. So a good pair of gloves is useful to have when you're pruning as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's not really much else you need. Those are the main things. Uh, now you can get away with just a, a few tools in the garden and do most of your pruning with these items. So we hope this content was helpful in some ways. You think about the pruning tools you need for your backyard. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. We thank you for watching and we hope to see you the next time.